Well hi there and welcome to the short video looking at some of the global economic data releases in a little bit more detail. Um, you guys at home might not even realise this but every single day there's actually a major global bit of economic data that comes out that can have quite a big effect on your current open positions and they come out from over in America, from over in Japan and the Eurozone but also the United Kingdom there as well. So what exactly are these figures? What do they represent and what impact can they have on your trading? Well that's exactly what we're going to cover right now. For the purpose of this quick short video, we're going to look at some of the most important American bits of data that comes out, because generally, because it is the world's biggest economy, these data releases tend to have the biggest impact on the world markets. So, which one will we cover first? Well, right here, we've got the trade balance. And the trade balance measures the demand for goods and services from a, t from a t particular country between the rest of the world. And it's basically measuring, it's a statistical element there, measuring the difference between the exports and the imports into a particular country. And uh, what it does is it really measures measures the competitiveness of a firm because if lots and lots of investment is leaving a country and not very much coming in, it usually tends to mean that that, com that country is not that competitive. So it's a very important date release and it normally comes out in America about 40 days after the month's end and it can have quite a big impact not just on the equity markets and the foreign exchange markets but also on commodities there as well. So trade balance, a very important one to remember. The next bit of economic data that we're going to quickly cover is a very important one as it's a measure of inflation and it's called the Consumer Price Index. And the uh, CPI actually measures inflation as I said there before and what, the, what it actually does is it has a look at a basket of uh, typical goods and services that are consumed by uh, the consumer at home, measures those prices and then measures it again the following month and it measures the difference between the prices of that, that basket of goods. If the basket of goods is increasing in value, that means that inflation is also increasing. So things get slightly more expensive month on month out. Those daily core goods get more and more expensive, that can have an impact on, uh, you know, on, on an economy's uh, propensity to, to consume. If core goods are getting too expensive, people then tend not to buy so much. Obviously, if uh, the CPI figures go down, that means uh, that the core goods and services are actually going down in value, but then the danger is that people will then start buying up, causing uh, inflation to increase. So CPI is a massively important bit of data that comes out. It comes out monthly, about 15 days after the month actually ends itself. So that's a very interesting one for us to look at. The next one to cover is called the Producer Price Index, or the PPI. What does it measure? Quite simply, production. And it measures the change in the price of factory produced goods. Now, why this was important? If it costs more money for the producers to produce, who do you think uh, the extra cost gets passed on to? It gets passed on to the consumer. So if prices are increasing, once again, it's a good measure of inflation. If producing costs are going down, it's telling you that inflation is dropping there as well. In America, once again, a monthly figure comes out about 17 days after the month ends. So it usually tends to come out a little bit after the CPI data. And the next one that we're gonna have a look at is non-farm payroll figures, arguably one of the most important bits of economic data that is released full stop. What does it measure? It measures employment for employees, not including farm workers, private sector employees, and non-profit organizations. The reason why they call it non-farm payrolls is because farm workers tend to be seasonal. So we don't actually include those guys in the actual set of figures itself. It is the number one bit of economic data that comes out each month the first Friday of every single month over there in the US. And if there's more jobs being created over in America, that means their economy is recovering, there's stimulation there. If jobs are getting lost and more and more people are getting made unemployed and so forth, then that gives you a bit of a flavor about uh, how badly the American economy is doing. So once again, first Friday of every single month, non-farm payroll figures, the number one economic bit of data out there. So the next one we're gonna go ahead and have a look at is unemployment claims. And obviously I mentioned this a little bit after uh, non-farm payrolls because unemployment basically measures the uh, number of people who are currently out of work and obviously claiming unemployment benefit. This figure is a bit different from the other ones that we've covered because it is released weekly. All the other data releases so far are released uh, monthly. So because this is released weekly, by monitoring this, you can actually get a bit of a flavor of, as to how the actual overall picture is developing. And uh, this one here is released uh, five days after the end of the week and can have quite a big impact on that non-farm payroll figure. Obviously, if unemployment uh, claims are dropping, that can be very good for the non-farm payroll figures. If unemployment claims are rising, that's obviously going to be potentially quite bad for the non-farm payroll figures. So a very important one for you guys at home to bear in mind. The next one we're going to head, uh, have a look at is gross domestic product, or GDP, okay? This one is particularly important because it actually measures the size of an economy. And the gross domestic product is one of the primary indicators to gauge the health of that economy. So if GDP is increasing, that means that the country economy 
we potentially doing that a little bit better. If GDP levels are coming down, that means that, that the country itself is making that little bit less money and affects its uh, competitiveness out there as well. If GDP figures are dropping, it puts extra pressure on the government of that particular country to lower interest rates to try and stimulate the economy that little bit more. So GDP, a very important one to come out. It only comes out quarterly and it comes out 30 days after the end of the quarter. The next figure that we're going to go ahead and have a look at is retail sales. This is a very interesting one for those of out there who consider themselves to be quite big consumers. And what does it measure? Simply, consumer demand. And typically it's the number of durable goods and non-durable goods that consumers are consuming on a monthly basis. And you measure how well the retailers are doing month in from month out. If the retail sales figures are coming down that little bit, that usually means that the, uh, the consumers out there, the economy itself is kind of drifting down that little bit lower. If people aren't spending that much money, it usually means the economy is potentially not doing so well. If the retail sales figures are increasing in value and keep on going up and people are out there buying electronics and buying cars and buying this and that, that tends to be that the economy is quite stimulated and can be very good for the stock markets and some of the foreign exchange pairs that are related in this particular example to the US dollar. Retail sales figures come out monthly about 14 days after the month ends. Typically retail sales are of most importance during the Christmas period as well for obvious reasons. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. The next one we're going to go ahead and have a look at is industrial production. This one's quite important because it measures consumer demand. And it's an economic report that gives a, a bit of a, a measure of the output of the industrial sector of a particular economy. Obviously massively important, how, how is industry doing, uh, how much uh, is the products are they producing, is that going up, is that going down, it's quite a broad measure of a particular economy. And it's released monthly about 16 days after the month itself ends, so that's industrial production. The last one we're going to have a look at is one of the uh, more important ones as well and it's called the Purchasing Managers Index or PMI and this one is quite important as it measures growth of an economy. What makes this fit a little bit different is that it's a diffusion based index, it's uh, from a survey of about 600 different uh, purchasing managers from right across the US covering everything from construction, services to manufacturing and the answer is basically a survey and there's a number generated that is round about the number 50. 50 is the magical number. If the um, PMI figure comes out above 50, that means that there's expansion within the economy. If that figure comes out below 50, that means there's a contraction. Okay, so typically anything over 50, it seems to be very, very positive for the economy. Everything below 40, it seems to be quite negative. That means it's contracting there. And that is also a monthly figure, and it's released the first business day after the month ends. And I hope that gives you guys at home a little bit of an idea of what to expect. Remember, these are American figures, but most of these are covered in the Eurozone, over in Asia, and over in parts of the UK as well. And these are the big data releases that you guys at home want to be aware of. Thank you very much for listening.